What's really good about this is the beginning, the beginning, which is Adam and Eve, is not the overall beginning. It's just the beginning of one version of the story, one story. But the thing is, in 3D physical reality, we're taught to think linearly from 1900 to 2000. Right, Adam and Eve was there, and then the next one would happen, and then the next one would happen. But from the bird's eye point of view, they're all happening simultaneously. So there was no there was no such thing as the beginning. The only beginning is oneness, and the only end is oneness. The only beginning is wholeness, and the only end is whole is wholeness. Oneness, right? Returning to oneness, right? Which is the which is the third eye. Oneness is the third eye. Adam is the third eye. Cain and Abel are the two eyes, right? So oneness, oneness is the beginning. Oneness is the end, <laughs> right? Oneness is the beginning, <laughs> and oneness is the end, <laughs> because there is no time. There is no time, right? Time will be no more. The end. So if we're talking about the Bible, because it just depends on what we're talking about. But if we're talking about the Bible. You have Genesis is the beginning, Revelation is the end. But then you say the Bible is also versions. There's updated versions. There's edited versions. Right? There's paraphrased versions, updated for uh, recent times. Right? And so you say the end and the beginning, and then the story happens. Right? So you know the beginning, you know the end, right? And then the, the story happens. But did the end happen before the beginning? Well, if you look at it, there's the tree. Right, and then there's the apple, and then there's the seeds. The seeds go after the seeds create the tree, which gives you apples, which gives you more seeds to grow more trees. And so you have the beginning, right, which gives you which, which, which drops you through the story, which gets you to the end. The end has the potential to create a new beginning, right? And the beginning creates another story, which gets you to the end again. The end starts a new beginning, and then which gets you to the next cycle, which gets you to the end. So there is the end, but then there's always another cycle. There's always cycles, there's always seasons, you know, there's always cycles, there's always seasons. David Wilcock talks about this in the book, Synchronicity Key, as well, right? So there's a beginning, there's the end, there's, there's cycles. But if we're talking about the Bible, right, we're, we're talking about the Bible right now, is there's Genesis, is the beginning, all the way to the end, which is Revelation. And so why is Revelation so important right now? Right? And, then, and then that's another one of the questions, is why is Revelation so important? It's because a new beginning is coming. So if the new beginning is coming, then that means we must be at the end. So if we're at the end, what are we at the end of, specifically? What are we at the end of, specifically? We're at the end of fear. We're at the end of time. We're at the end of death. Right? Because and it's really not death in how we think of it, but it's the label death in of itself and how we look at it. Because really, death isn't what we think it is. Right? Death is not based around time. And we're wondering what's happening in the afterlife. What's happening after we die? Because that is an outdated belief. That is an outdated perspective. Right? And this is what I see as to be the truth. And now, so, as I'm going on this journey to discover what the real truth actually is, right, I'm wondering, I'm, I have so many questions. I have so many questions. I, and I feel that by asking these questions, I'm going to get answers. And so I want to get these answers. And I, I want to really wonder, where did we, where did we come from? Like, really, where did we come from, where are we going, and where are we now? And, and are we really going anywhere in the future? And does the future really exist? Right? And so these are these questions. Some are questions, some are answers, some are statements. And the highest resonancy is what I choose. Right? The highest resonancy. How do I know? How do you know? And see, people, so most, most decisions people make right now, it seems like, from my point of view, is that if this is good, then I choose it. If it's bad, I don't choose it, right? If it's right, I'll choose it. If it's wrong, I'll choose it. And so if, if there's right and wrong, we're labeling the dark as bad, and we're labeling the light as good. But it's not necessarily there's light and dark, good and bad. Because there's not necessarily anything that's bad. There's not necessarily anything that's good. And it's not necessarily anything that's right or wrong. And so it's realizing that you don't choose the answer that's right. You don't choose the answer that's good. You choose the answer that's oneness. You choose the answer that's wholeness. You choose the answer that's wholeness, which includes all perspectives. You choose the answer that resonates with you. What resonates is, is that all perspectives are true from the observer of the perspective, right? All per perspectives are true from the observer of the perspective, right? 
All perspectives are true from the observer of the perspective. And so there's not that there's just one, you know, you're right, she's wrong, or he's right, and you're wrong, but it's about that there, there is no right or wrong, right, from, from the higher viewpoint. But if you're living in one perspective, you may see things from a point of view where this is right and this is wrong. And that's where rules come in. That's where laws come in, right? Because these are the standards. Somewhere along the line, we lost track. It seems that we lost track of morals and ethics, and we started just allowing anything to be right and wrong. And so I don't know, maybe that's my own projection, but it seems to be that's the case. That somewhere along the line, some things started happening that we said or were good, some things were bad, and somehow this is legal, that's not legal. Why really is that? Is it fear? Is it propaganda? Is it all this, is it, is it even, is this a conspiracy? Like, not even those words, but it's like, why, what really is the truth? What do we want to believe and why? You know, is this based around fear or is this based around love? And then you look at it as, it all comes down to the beginning. And this is the theory, and it seems to be true, and I'm looking for more research on this, by the way, is that it seems that, it seems that you have Adam, right? Adam is oneness, right? Adam is oneness, and then you have two. So if, if the beginning is one, what comes after one is two, right? So if the, if the initial was Adam, Adam is an Adam. So Adam is one, and then the Adam splits into two, a half, right? Splits into a half, which is good and bad, right and wrong, light and dark. And so because of good, bad, right or wrong, light and dark, then what happens? What happens from good and bad, right and wrong, right and wrong light and dark? What happens is now we're labeling things as I'm only going to see this point of view. And this is where the divide and conquer belief comes from, but I don't believe necessarily that there's anyone controlling this whole thing, because there's no one, no one can control anything. We create everything. And so what was really interesting about this, what's really interesting about this is that you're not, you're not saying this is right, this is wrong, but somewhere along the line, this is why I have questions, is that my questions are coming from, is that there are, there it seems to be that a lot of times, you know, whether it's in sports, or whether it's in churches growing up, and it could be my own programming for my own family. But it all comes down, if I think about it, it comes back down to, you know, who are the first people to live in your state ever? Like, who are the first people to ever live in your family ever? Like, the entire ancestry of it ever. Like, think about it, because the belief came from somewhere. Where did the belief come from? Like, the very beginning of every belief. Like, what is the very beginning of every belief, and why do we still believe it? And do we want to still believe it? Does the belief still resonate? That like beliefs around money, beliefs around food, beliefs around drinks, beliefs around, you know, water, beliefs around running, beliefs around sleep, food, exercise. You know, we have beliefs about everything that we don't even know we have. And so why do we believe what we believe? What do we want to believe? What do we need to believe? What must we believe? What should we believe, right? Yes, and, but, but really, you got to ask, before we can get to where we need to be, we got to say, here's where we are, here's where we are, here's where we want to be, but also here's where we came from. This is the very beginning. And so we've all been through this whole thing together. Now we're here in linear reality, but also we're getting here next, right? So we, we, were, we were here, but we went through all of that. Now we're here, and here's where we're going next. So we got to decide, number one, we got to decide where we're going but on, a, but on a deeper level, it's already been decision. It's already been decided. There's nothing to decide because it, it's all coming from the higher source anyway. You know, whether we're following the divine will or not, it, it's already been decided. The, the divine will is, there was no decision. Because for you to have a, for you to make a decision, you have to have a choice, right? And so before there were choices, there was only oneness. There was only wholeness before there were choices. You didn't get a choice until you labeled something as right or wrong. I want this, but I don't want that. And so when you let go of choices, you're left with what? You're left with the truth. When you let go of choices, you're left with the truth. When you, when you let go of choices, you're left with the truth. When you let go of opinions, you're left with the truth. When you let go of beliefs, you're, you're, you're left with the, tr with the truth. When you let go of this or this, you're left with the truth, which is what? Oneness. Oneness labels our limitations, right? So what labels do we choose? We choose what resonates. How do we find our way to, to wholeness is follow what's resonating. And so are we filtering Are we filtering what resonates based off of our own fears? Are we filtering what's resonating based off of, you know, this is something that I used to do, that I don't do anymore because this doesn't work. 
There's a better way. There's a faster way. There's a more quick way. There's a more direct way. There's a more simple, specific way that works a little bit more effortlessly and efficiently. So I don't necessarily have to do the old thing anymore. So I used to do this, but I don't have to do that anymore. And so we, we, we tend to oversimplify information over time to get to the point where and now we're, we, you know, we're, we're in this today's day and age, right? Where everything seems to be that there's a lot of different perspectives. And just depending on who you are, depending on what you go through, it seems that a lot of people have, you know, this sense of who should I actually listen to, right? Not that it's a person, but, it not, but it's not even that it's, you're listening to a person or a certain group of people or specific people necessarily as if they hold the one truth or anyone for that matter. But it's really realizing that the truth was there before you decided to find it. Before you even looked for it, it was already there. The truth was there the whole time. We came from the truth, which is what? Which is oneness. We came from the truth, which is oneness, which is wholeness. We came from wholeness. And therefore, the only place we're going is wholeness. And so how do we get to wholeness? How do we be wholeness? Right? How do we get to wholeness is to what? Right? We let go of the perspectives of, I'm right, you're wrong. We let go of, I'm better, you're worse. Or, I'm worse, you're better. And I'm not good enough. Right? We let go of all these beliefs, but how do we do that? But how do we let go of, I'm good, you're bad, I'm better than you, you're better than me. And it's all coming down, it's all programming. Right? And we can get lost in this matrix of all these programs, but if you look back all the way to the beginning, you know, one of the theories that I have, it seems, it seems to be true, or one of the truths, it seems to be pretty much true, and it seems to be a good perspective, is that, is that right? Say good. It, it seems to be a good perspective, which is that if we, we, if somewhere along the line, we, we wanted to get recognition, right? We wanted to get recognition. What did we want to get recognition for, right? What do we want to get recognition for? Somewhere along the line, you know, there was Adam, then there was Cain and Abel, right? And then there was other daughters and sons, but there, it's that there was Cain and Abel, and one of them was considered good, and one of them was considered bad. But then if you go deeper into it, why was that? And then somewhere along the line, we, somehow someone labeled Cain as they were the right, or they were labeled Abel that he did something good. He did something right, like, and then, and then the story as I remember it, and then if you, if you look at it, you, there's, there's deeper levels to go into the story. There's much deeper levels to go. There's much more to learn about this. But from what I'm seeing at this point in time, is that what's really interesting about this is that Cain and Abel, right, is that Abel ended up killing Cain, okay? So where did the fear of death come from? Uh, the, the fear of dis, the, the fear of you know, betrayal come from? Where does our fear of betrayal come from? It's in the movies today. It's normal. But where did it initially come from? Because it couldn't have been normal in a world where we're living in, in wholeness and oneness. It wouldn't live in a world where we're in oneness and wholeness, would it? No. So why do we kill each other? Well, we kill each other. It all came down to the beginning. Abel and Cain. Why do we kill each other? We kill each other because one of them was considered right. One of them was considered wrong. The one that was considered wrong disagreed. I'm not wrong, I'm right. So what am I going to do? I'm going to kill you. Because if you're gone, then I have to be right. Because I'm the only one left. And that's why we're all killing each other. That's why we're all creating these wars. Because I'm better than you. I'm better and I'm going to win. Right? And so that's really what that's really what all the competition, that's really what all the competition came from. Right? It all came down, it all came down to the competition. What was the competition initially from? The competition was initially from one person was labeled as right, one person was labeled as wrong, one person was labeled as good, one person was labeled as bad, one person was labeled as better, one person was labeled as not the best. And so was, was it really true? Or, or did some, where did, the, what happened in that moment? Like really think, what happened in that moment? Why, why did, and, and, and there was, that's where jealousy or, or envy came in, but was it even right? Was, was what Cain did right? Is Cain so bad? Or what happened before that? Right? So think about it. What happened before Cain killed Abel? Why did Cain kill Abel? Think about it. Why did it happen? Really go deep into it without judgment, without pointing fingers, without automatically saying, oh, he's wrong, he's right. Just sit and think, why? Okay, why? 
And then you get, go even further than that. And then you say, okay, before Cain and Abel even existed, where were we? We were with we were with wholeness, with Adam. But did Adam split away from wholeness? Did Eve? What about Eve? Right? There's other there's other things you know about that. There's the garden. There's the Lilith that people will talk about. There's snakes. There's trees. There's apples. There's all kinds of different points of view of this and deeper levels to this. But what really happened? Right? What really happened there? It really happened. And um, what really happened? And why does that matter? Right? Why does it matter? Because if all beliefs came from, if beliefs are repeated thoughts, right? If beliefs are, you know, from our repeated experiences, you know, it is deep. But in the very beginning, there could not have been beliefs. How could there be beliefs in the beginning and in the end? There are no beliefs there because there's oneness. How could you have a belief before you have an experience? How could you have a belief before you have a habit? How could you have a belief before you have anything to contact? You know, when Adam and Eve were created, guess what? Were they babies first? Were they nurtured? Or were they just, did they just appear right there? Think about it. Ooh, think about it. Did Adam and Eve, were they babies? Did they grow up? Or were they automatically there at their age? What age were they? They were timeless. Adam and Eve were timeless. They didn't have a time. They had no time. So how could Adam and Eve have aged if there was no time? How can you age? How can you get older if you were never younger? Think about it. How can you get older if you were never younger? You would always be the same, which is what? Wholeness. And so if that's where we're headed, which is the end, I believe, I think, I feel. But how far away are we from getting there? And that's another question. How, what do we have to actually do? How is this, how is this going to work? Right? So there's, there's steps to this. There's really, you got to think about this. Okay, at, when Adam and Eve were created, it's almost as if they were they te maybe they teleported in there, maybe they came off of a ship from a, a, another's planet. But then there's whole other questions, and that seems a little bit too far out there. But maybe it's not. Who knows? But did God put them there? How did God put them there specifically? Right, God putting them there is very vague. How did He put them there? What specifically did He do? Did He create it? Are we are we thoughts in God's consciousness? Who is God? Is God the creator of the matrix? Is God creator of the universe? Like, it is a lot of questions. Who really is this God person? Is God a person? Is God a higher self? Is God the universe? Who really is God? Who is the beginning? Who is the end? Right, so who is this person? Okay, who is this person? And so it's, it's something that, it's, it's, there's questions to ask. We're all coming back to wholeness, though. We're coming back to wholeness coming back to wholeness and we're coming back to wholeness we're, we're coming back to wholeness so what is wholeness right we're, we're coming back to the truth which is oneness why is oneness right think about it what is oneness it's before there is multiple perspectives before there's right and wrong before there's good and bad before there's light and dark so who put adam there who put eve there why specifically and from the beginning what does it say in genesis and just because it says something doesn't mean it describes it really deeply. It just gives you the story. But what there had to be more than what was written. What was written was the truth. And so the truth was, it's pulling us back to oneness, right? It's pulling back to oneness. Okay, so where are we headed? To oneness. Why? Because the beginning is the end. The apple came from the tree. The tree came from the seed. The seed came from the apple, and the apple came from the tree. And the tree came from the seed. So when did the first seed go? When was the very beginning, the first seed? The first seed was came from the thought seed. God created a seed by saying, by thinking the thought seed. It was what? Materialization. So an advanced civilization we have was called a materializer, like an easy materializer. So what is that? It's instant manifestation. There's no lag. It's instant. The moment you think the thought, it appears in your reality. And so there's no lag. Adam, poof, Adam appears. The garden, poof, that garden appears. So in that reality, it's in a higher dimension where things happen automatically. The imagination, right? We say you're not supposed to have imagination. You need to follow the rules. Okay, well, the rules that came after, we decided that this is right and this is wrong. So eh, whatever, you can, you can look back 20 years, but you can also look back 2,000 years. You can also look back before there was time. Adam and Eve was before time. And so when do we start aging? Think about that. When do we start aging? And if, you, and if you look at the book, if you look at the Bible, right, the Holy Bible, the whatever the Bible is, 
if you look at the Bible, is what you'll see is that somewhere along the line, civilization, humanity as a whole, went against God. It went against God. God had to intervene. God gave God gave Noah the great flood. Right there, was so, at some point in time, there was an Armageddon. There was a fire. There was there's different ways that civilization has been destroyed. Greg Braden talks about this as well in one of his shows on God. Is civilization has been destroyed many times. Who destroys civilization? No one else but God Himself. God will destroy you and everything. God will destroy civilization when you go against Him. And so why do we go against Him? And do we want? Do we want? And who is Him? Is it really He? Is God a He or is God a She or is God both? Which is oneness. So we're heading to a place where there's no gender. We're heading to a place where there's no sex. We're heading to a place where there's no reproduction. Because when you're when you're in oneness, there is no gender. Does that make sense? There is no gender in these higher dimensional planets. There is no genders. Okay? There's no genders. How could there be a gender? Where, where would the gender be from? The gender is only for reproduction. Right? Reproduction. So and then there's theories that this is an experiment. Right? This is from, you know, the, 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 uh, the um, uh, what is it called? The Anunnaki or something, an experiment. And these are words. But these are labels. These are frequencies. So is this the truth? Is it part of the truth? You know, some people have heard this part, some people have this, some people, but it doesn't really matter. You know, we're coming to the truth here. And that's the whole point of this entire video, is we're coming to the truth. We're coming to the truth. How do we get to the truth? Like, how do we get to the truth? What is the truth? Right? What even is the truth? Oneness, wholeness. Oneness and wholeness. And so if we're headed there, that means we came from there. That was the beginning and it's the end. And so there's the apple that came from the tree. Right, the seed that came from the apple, the tree, the tree, the tree came from the seed. Sorry, I'm doing the wrong order. Tree came from the seed. Seed came from the apple. Apple came from the tree. Tree came from the seed, which came from the apple, which came from the tree. Okay, that's the way it worked. And so we we went from oneness, we split off from oneness, and now we're coming back to oneness. And perhaps we'll split off from oneness again. What is oneness? Oneness is complete connection with God, divine will. Okay. Oneness is complete connection with God. That means there is there is no free will there, because free will is opinions, free will is beliefs, right? Free will is this is something that I picked up from my past, and now I'm going to take it into this present moment. Free will is having an opinion based off of past experience, right? Divine will is just being in the truth this moment. There is no beliefs necessarily, but part of being this 3D concept, blah 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 blah. Is there, you know, there's time here, there's linear, right? but are we really in time anymore? I don't think we are. I mean, the moment you leave time, you're no longer in time. So you just don't have to be in time anymore. That's really what it comes down to, oneness, wholeness. You're not in time. We're from the beginning. <laughs> right? <laughs> we, came from, we come from the beginning, okay? We come from the beginning. And we're headed to the end, which also is a cycle for the next beginning. It gives us another cycle. So will we go against God, or are we headed to a time where we are one with God? And so here's what we got to know. And this is a little bit later on, but why, when we, when we went with God, do we get to a point where we're there? Or do we realize that part of this entire contract is there's just a season. Season for dark, there's a season for light. It's never going to be all light. It's never going to be all dark. It's both. Right? It's always both, because if we're living in the linearity of right and wrong, it's returning to oneness. There is no right. There is no wrong. There is no good. There is no bad. There is no light. There is no dark. And that's why we have laws. We have laws in the matrix. There's laws. There's all this stuff. That's the matrix, though. That's not the new planet. That's not the new earth. That's not the new center. That's not the new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem is oneness with God. There's no rules there. You don't need to create rule over someone. Rule over someone is a fear that they won't act the right way. Why do we have a fear they didn't act the right way? It's because in the past we went against from God. We went, went we went away from God. So we have to we have to protect ourselves from not experiencing that pain again. So we have to protect ourselves and we have to interfere with other people because we don't trust God. We don't trust ourselves to stay in oneness with God. So we go outside of ourselves to try to fix someone else, try to change someone else instead of coming back to oneness. And really realizing the only thing we can do is be one as ourselves. And so the, the greatest rulers are ones that don't seek power. Right? Why they don't seek power? They don't seek power because they don't need power. 
You don't need power because you're oneness. You're oneness already. You trust in the goodness of others. This is the Tao Te Ching. You trust in the goodness of others because everyone else is your peer. People are on a frequency. You are on a frequency. And so when your frequency goes into other things, it gives you, it, it manipulates the energy field. It manipulates the field of energy. And so you, you have the energy to change anything. In, in reality itself, what the belief do we know? Dr. Joe Spencer. You have, you have the, you have the ability to, to change anything in reality with your own frequency. What do you mean by frequency? What is a frequency? Right? What is a frequency? Right? You're going to know this. What is a frequency? What is a frequency? It's a vibration. Feel a resonance. A frequency is not something that your mind has to understand, but it's something that you feel. It's something that you feel. So this is why I go raw vegan. This is why I go celibacy, because your spirit, your spirit is multiplied. Your spirit is activated. And your spirit can feel the truth. And in those feelings contains information. And this information you can decipher and interpret, so now you understand. You have to understand. For you to understand, you have to first experience. And for you to experience, you have to activate. So to, to activate the soul is oneness. Right? This is oneness in of itself. This is oneness. This is oneness. Right? Oneness. Wholeness. This is what it is. Right? Oneness. It is oneness. It is wholeness. It is knowing this is the truth. This is the truth. Oneness is the truth. But where did it begin? So why do we not, why are we afraid? What are we afraid of? Our fears are just generational trauma. Not from our childhood, not from our grandparents. I mean, that's part of it. But it's deeper than that. It's, it goes all the way back to the beginning, right? It goes all the way to the beginning. And it's part of it, right? That's, that's the part we can see. So we can see the parents, we can see the grandparents, sometimes if they're still here. And so you go further than that, right? You go further than that. Is that you realize in this new Jerusalem, there's death is no more. And so New Jerusalem, then I would say, it means it has a set time frame, right? Maybe it's a thousand years, maybe it's two thousand years, maybe it's three thousand years. I mean, it was probably closer to one thousand to two thousand years, somewhere in that range. But how long is it specifically? And if there's already a predetermined beginning, that means there's already a predetermined end. And because there's a predetermined beginning, there's a predetermined end. That means it's already played out. I mean, it's already played out because the potential is already played out. So how much can we really affect matter? An energy of itself, right? How much to get all the way to the future and to get to the beginning end of the cycle? Because there's a cycle of time, right? There's a cycle of time. So how do we get there? How do we get there? Right? Think about that. How do we? How do we get there? And when we get there, is the end always destruction? Do we have to destroy to get to the next step? Or is there a way to end a cycle? and end a better cycle and begin a better cycle can the cycles always get better and, can, and, it, and it gets to a point where it doesn't have to get better because it's already the best it could be so if it's already the best it could be then what's the best it could be the best it could be is oneness but then once you get to oneness you just do the cycle again okay let's put off in the two again and this is why we have reincarnation and this is why we have different cycles this is why we destroy ourselves because apparently towards the end of a cycle the end of the Roman Empire, the end of the United States, not coming soon, most likely, right? More than likely, almost positively. And then the beginning, of the, the end of the other civilizations from before, right? Is they all ended. Why do they end? Because they became outdated. Or they went against God. Or there's more to it. They haven't researched it or remembered yet. But, or have the articulation to express in this moment. But the point is, it's already happened. And so if it's already happened, what did happen and why? What is there to learn from what happened before? What What, what is it that we're, we're, we're headed to next? Where are we really headed? You know, if we're in 2000, you know, I don't want to use time. I don't even want to use time because it doesn't resonate with it. But if we're in the 2020s, right, and some people will say that, I don't resonate. This doesn't resonate. But if we're in the internal now and oneness, there's no time here. So you can experience. So guess what happens in, in what you would call heaven? Right, or whatever, immortality. If in the New Jerusalem, there's no time. So what does that mean? You can time travel. So if you can time travel, you have to be in a place of oneness to time travel. You have to be in a place of oneness. To time travel, you have to be in a place of oneness. To teleport, you have to be in a place of oneness. Right? Because you have to let go of the, the idea that there's genders, that there's sex, that there's death, 
that there's fear, that there's aging. You have to let go of all of that to enter oneness. Once you enter oneness, you have the power. When, you're, when you have the power, that's when you can do the extra stuff. That's when you can time travel. That's when you can use telepathy. That's when you can telekinesis, right? Most likely, walk on water, stuff like that. Crazy things, quote unquote, crazy stuff. You know, spaceships. It's in oneness. It's in oneness. So there's no, there's no sex there. There's no, there's no reproduction, right? There's none of that. There's no, there's no gluttony, right? There's the seven guilty. Sh there's no, there's the seven, there's the seven sh sins, right? But we're, you know, not judging them intentionally. We're not judging it. But it's it, the point is, is that it's 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 the seven what is, what is it? the seven deadly sins right so return to oneness returning to oneness returning to oneness is realizing that in this place it's creation okay in this place it's creation so you can create okay you know what i this is what i learned growing up that i remember is growing up in church okay growing up in church what i learned Right. What I what I learned growing up in church was that in heaven, in heaven you 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 meet God, you meet Jesus, you you do whatever you want. You can fly, you have the you know all the stuff you want. What would what would your heaven look like? What would your heaven look like? Right. And so it's 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 it's, it's true. Like it seems to be true. So you know, and I was thinking as a kid, you know, mine's gonna have I'm gonna have a mansion. I'm gonna have a basketball court. All my friends are gonna play basketball, and we're, all my friends are gonna live together. We're all gonna live together and hang out and play fun, have fun and play. Play video games and play. I mean, I didn't play video games. I don't think I played video games. Yeah, I played video games and play basketball. Like pretty much that, something like that. That was my heaven. And so heaven. What is heaven? What is the New Jerusalem? It's oneness. So oneness is realizing that you can create with your with everyone, and you don't have to be afraid of something going wrong. You don't have to be stressed out. You don't have to be worried. Imagine if you meet anyone on the street at any time, and know that you can create anything with them, and nothing bad would happen. No fear, no stranger danger, no trauma. But and then this is where oh, but this happened last time. But this happened the time before. But this, and that's what we have to let go of to enter oneness. We have to heal ourselves and return back to oneness of trusting another as we trust ourselves. The Tao Te Ching, he who knows when to stop, is free to go on, right? He he who doesn't seek power is fit to have power. He and what's the other one, right? It's 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 he trusting the goodness of others. You know, whatever it is, the quote is, you don't, you're not afraid. There's no fear in oneness. Ascension is, 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 is transcending good, bad, right, wrong, light, dark, right, human flesh, gluttony, lust, you know, all these sins. And getting to the truth, right? Getting to the truth, oneness. And so, you know, you can, there's programs of this and all this stuff. And you, and oneness is the truth, right? So oneness is the truth. That's, that's really the truth, right? And one last thing, guys, to end it off, Revelation, beginning and end. So, Revelation is not just the end. Revelation is also the beginning of the next cycle. So, what's in the next cycle, right? This is what, you know, we, 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 we already know. We already remember because it's already the truth. And then there's this whole cycle because in the quantum field, we have the past and the future. We have what we already went through and we have what we're going to experience next. Right? Anyway, guys. Uh... <laughs> I'm going to end it off here. Um, much love.